tonight's video is going to focus on phylogeny, building phylogenetic trees and cladograms, and using those to interpret evolutionary relationships. So let's start with a little bit about what phylogeny is. So we're going to use phylogenetic trees and cladograms to help show evolutionary relationships, because that's what phylogeny is. Phylogeny is the study of our evolutionary relationships. So our phylogenetic tree is going to be this tree-like structure here that shows the evolutionary relationships of our groups of organisms. It's going to show the amount of change over time. That's one of the differences between a phylogenetic tree and a cladogram, is a phylogenetic tree is supposed to represent passages of time. And those passages of time are going to be based off of morphology, fossils, or what we call the molecular clock. Okay. The molecular, molecular clock is going to be the average rate at which the species genome accumulates mutations. Because remember, that's going to, um, that will facilitate change or facilitate evolution. So my molecular clock, it can be different from organism to organism. So the molecular clock is the average rate at which the species genome will accumulate these mutations. And these are going to help show a true evolutionary history. Phy phylogenies can also be based on embryology as well as RNA and protein similarities. So we can also use amino acid sequencing and stuff to build phylogenetic trees. And these are representing a hypothesis, both the cladogram and the tree are representing a hypothesis of what we think the evolutionary relationship between these organisms is. So when we're building a tree, we're going to be using traits that are gained or lost during evolution. So you can build it either way, based off of traits that are gained as the organisms, as the species has changed, or based off of traits that have been lost as the species has changed, like for instance the wolf to whale um, phylogenetic tree. So shared characters are present. They have to be present in more than one lineage. Okay, and that's what would obviously make it a shared character. Shared and derived characters indicate common ancestry. Okay, so these are going to show that there is a common ancestor somewhere along the path. The original shared trait is the same as the ancestral trait. So these two terms can be used interchangeably when you're given information about how to build the tree. The trait that is found in the newly evolved organism so the newest, most recent organism, that is considered our derived trait. So again, these are vocabulary type things that you'll want to be aware of as you're working through um, questions or problems about building these diagrams. So the ancestral trait is the original trait. The derived trait is the traits that are in the newest organisms. My outgroup is going to be the lineage that is the least closely remaining um, related to the remainder. So whenever you have a phylogenetic tree that looks like this, this is usually always our outgroup, right? This is the one that is the least related to all of the other organisms. And as we look at other forms of phylogenetic trees as we go through, I'll point out where your outgroups would be. So our first step when, construct when constructing a tree would be to figure out how many species have a particular characteristic in common. Okay, and we'll build from there. Then you're going to group species so that the most number of species have the most characteristics in common. Okay, remember, the simplest explanation is true. This is called our rule of maximum parsimony. So, our, if we're spelling, parsimony. So this maximum parsimony is that basically our simplest explanation is true. Characteristics don't usually evolve multiple times. They are most likely to evolve one time. So we want the simplest tree we can get where we don't have the same characteristics that keep evolving over and over and over again. That they, keep show, they show up once and that's about it. So more closely related organisms will have fewer differences in genetic sequence. Okay, and that would make sense if they have similar characteristics, and that means they need to have similar DNA that will code for those characteristics. So, for instance, the tree on the right here, and you have the yak, cattle, sheep, the giraffe, horse, human. So human would be our outgroup, the least related to all of those. Okay, we can see how it's totally separate from the rest of those organisms. So in building this tree, they would have been looking for particular characteristics that they all had in common, Okay, and then grouping them so that they have the most characteristics in common, so that we get that simplest explanation. So molecular data is ideally going to provide our most accurate and reliable evidence to help build these trees. 
So homologous structures, remember these are our structures that are similar um, in their actual structure, but they're usually different in function. So they're coded by genes with a common origin. So homologous structures, again, remember they're one of our evidence of evolution. So they show that link to a common ancestor. So these genes can still mutate, but keep a lot of the ancestral sequence. And so when you sequence the genome using software, you can start to identify these molecular homologies. This is actually an activity, a lab that we'll be doing in class. We'll use some software to sync some of these genomes, to sequence them, and then to compare them. And so the more closely related the organism is, the more like the DNA is going to be. And they'll be closer together on your tree or on your cladogram. So your given gene usually evolves at a constant rate. So like if you're looking at one gene, like for instance, a common one is cytochrome C. So one given gene, you will usually evolve at a constant rate. We can see it happening over here on this um, graph on the right. A, our rate, right, our slope is pretty constant for those nucleotide changes to be happening. And this is going to occur in species that are really closely related. They will have that kind of um, same rate of change there. And these mutation events can be used to predict the times at which the divergence would have happened. And we said phylogenetic trees try to take into consideration time. And you can see in this diagram on the left here, um, 25 million later, years later, 50 million years later. So you can see that this, the time frames that these changes were happening. So when constructing the tree, you're always going to start with your common ancestor. So if, for instance, in the one that's down here, this our common ancestor would be over here on the left. right? Sometimes the common ancestor is down here at the bottom. You know, for the ones that branch like this. It just kind of depends on the orientation of it. We'll look at a variety of orientations of phylogenetic trees so that you'll be comfortable with a lot of them. So we're going to start with our common ancestor. And then when features are introduced or lost, because remember you can build your tree based on characters that are gained or characteristics that are lost. So as they are introduced or lost, the tree will split. And that area where it splits is called a node. And so that node gives rise to two lineages. Usually, as, like for instance, if we're talking about a character that has um, appeared, it'll be the organisms that have it versus the ones that do not. Okay? Um, and so the nodes are going to represent our most recent common ancestor of any two groups. So for instance, this node that we pointed out right here represents the most recent common ancestor of a human and a mouse. The taxon is any group of species that's designated by name. Okay, and again, we'll look at some examples of these in class. And our sister taxa are groups of organisms that share an immediate common ancestor. There is no other branching in between them. Okay, they are the last branch off. Okay, so we'll work with drawing these, interpreting these, um, free responses about these, multiple choice about these in class.